Yeah, we got another book that was a little hard to find background information on. Uh, all I really found was a Wikipedia article which basically summarized the whole story in two paragraphs. So, I guess that means we're just going to have to cover the publisher of the book. Scholastic. Yeah, Scholastic. The same people who put up books like Clifford the Big Red Dog, Captain Underpants, Harry Potter, and The Hunger Games. Also publishes comics. When exactly they started, I couldn't pinpoint. Technically, Captain Underpants is sometimes considered to be a graphic novel, and that started in 1997. But Scholastic Comics came to my attention when they started doing color reprints of Jeff Smith's beloved Bone series. Which brings us to today's book, Queen Bee. Now, like I said before, I really couldn't find too much in the way of background information without completely spoiling the whole book. So I'm going to have to leave you with this. The main character of the book has her name spelled like this. And I couldn't figure out if it was pronounced Haley or Hallie. So you might hear me alternating pronunciations sometimes. And with that, let's begin Queen Bee. Meet Haley Madison, a teenage girl who's aspired to popularity her whole life, only to wind up being an outcast. This was compounded the last year when she started having a few instances where inanimate objects in her vicinity began flying around. Eventually, Haley's mother explained to Haley had inherited a family trait called psychokinesis, the ability to move objects with one's mind. This led Haley to feel even more isolated. She just wanted to be a normal kid and hang out with the other popular kids. Haley even tried using her abilities to aid her at sports, only for it to blow up in her face. No matter what, her psychokinesis would just find a way to muck everything up for her. Finally, relief came when Haley's mother accepted a new job as an editor at a teen magazine. This would require the two to move to a new city and Haley to switch schools. Seizing the opportunity to start over anew, Haley immersed herself in teen culture. She read magazines and websites for fashion advice. She watched teen romance movies like Pretty in Pink and Dirty Dancing. She listened to the hottest music. She even restocked her wardrobe. Finally, the day came where Haley was set to attend John F. Kennedy Intermediate School for the first time. A girl named Trini volunteered to give Haley a tour. Haley was introduced to Trini's group of friends, including Paige, the class vice president, Rachel, the class president, and Jetta, an obsessive germaphobe. Long story short, Trini is not part of the popular clique. The popular girls are a collective that have been dubbed The Hive, consisting of Angelica, Dominique, Keiko, and Steffi. The Hive name comes from the fact that the girls like to control people as if they are drones. Haley notices Angelica's new smartphone, only to lose control of her psychokinesis and have it fall apart. As she and Trini make their way through the school's lunch line, Haley begins plotting for a way to join The Hive. Though, after school, she uses her abilities to retrieve a young lady's shoes that were stuck in a tree and stop a young man from being bullied. Her actions were not entirely unnoticed, though no one saw her use her powers, and word eventually spreads to the Hive. The group's leader, Angelica, decides to try Haley out for the group. The next day, Steffi approaches Haley and invites them to sit with her at lunch. Much to Trini's chagrin. Haley sits with the Hive, and despite the occasional psychokinetic flare-up, she slowly begins to ease her way into the group, with one exception. The Hive's leader, Angelica, begins seeing Haley as a threat. Haley beats Angelica for a spot on the school's track team. Haley scores higher on tests, and then Haley beats Angelica in an art competition. By the way, all these little adventures all took place within the span of a week. Sometime later, Trini confronts Haley about the Hive. She tries warning Haley about the group and their shallowness, pointing out the Hive will turn on her the first chance they get. The conversation is overheard by Keiko, who tells Haley something about Trini. Trini and Angelica used to be the best of friends until the 7th grade, when Angelica started getting popular and Trini only got jealous. So Haley stopped hanging out with Trini, and thus became an official member of the Hive. Over time, though, Haley begins to notice that Trini might have actually been right about the Hive. During a critique read insult session, Haley asks if any of the group had actually read any books lately. She's met only with silence. The girls change her subject to the newest movie from some teeny ropper heartthrob named Justin. The next day, a new student arrives at JFK Intermediate. Her name is Alexa Harmon, and Haley notices something about her. 
Alexa also has psychokinetic abilities. The two's mutual powers collide, causing desks in the classroom to begin scattering. Okay, because this book's in black and white, I think I need to set things straight. Haley is the blonde. Alexa's the redhead. Alexa immediately begins integrating herself into the hive, who take an instant liking to her. Except for Haley. Eventually, the two girls talk, where Alexa states the obvious, and points out that the two probably shouldn't go demonstrating their psychokinetic abilities in public. Haley tries asking Alexa more, but Alexa doesn't really want to talk about it. Later, during an important test in science class, Haley notices Alexa using a crib sheet. So Haley moves the cheating device to the recycling bin. Suffice to say, Alexa is not amused. A few days later, during social studies, where another test is being held, Alexa psychically scoots another crib sheet in front of Haley's desk. Before Haley can move it, though, the teacher catches her. Haley is given an instant F and sent to the principal's office for cheating. The principal explains to Haley that if she gets caught cheating again, she'll be expelled. Haley stomps out of the office. The next day in biology, Alexa starts receiving text messages on her phone, so her teacher confiscates the phone, and she gets a week's detention in the process. Unfortunately for Haley, the rest of the hive is easily able to deduce that she was the one who set Alexa up. So Angelica votes to kick Haley out of the group, and the others fall in line. Trini and her friends catch wind of this, but choose to ignore it since Haley ditched them. Meanwhile, Haley sets about trying to take a makeup test in social studies. Her teacher says the only way she can make her grade up is to work on a class project with a partner. Her partner is a boy named Jasper Rains, the quietest guy in the school. The two get off to a rocky start, as Jasper points out that since Haley got caught cheating, they'll now have to work on a more difficult subject to get the A. In reality, though, Jasper is obviously the love interest. I mean, come on, he's wearing a Clash t-shirt. And if I know my cheesy teen romance movies, the male love interest almost always disdains popular music in favor of the punk-slash-new-wave band from the 70s and 80s that the director listened to. You know, the Ramones, the Clash, Depeche Mode, Joy Division. You get the idea. Haley and Jasper slowly begin to bond as they work on the school project together. Haley even comes over to the Rain's house for more study. Upon arrival, she is greeted first by an armada of dogs, and then by Jasper's mother and four younger siblings, all of whom assume that Haley is Jasper's girlfriend. Jasper apologizes for his family, but Haley laughs it off, saying that she's always wished for more siblings. Jasper shows off his penchant for drum playing and notices a locket around Haley's neck. She explains the locket is a family heirloom with a complicated story that she doesn't want to talk about at this point. The next day, Haley does her best to avoid Alexa when she notices a flyer for a talent competition called The American Dream Show. Dear Lord, she wants to compete in a terrible Hugh Grant Mandy Moore movie? I don't think that's a one-way ticket to popularity. Haley decides to join the competition, which will hopefully lead to her dethroning Alexa and reclaiming her popularity. Haley should also wash her hair every two weeks. At least every two weeks. Make sure it's clean and spotless. And when she sees Johnny Football Hero in the hallway, tell him he played a great game. Tell him he liked his article in the newspaper! Haley goes to her mall with her mother when she begins planning the routine and wardrobe she'll need for the contest. As she looks for a dress, Alexa pops up to select the outfit that Haley was looking at. Haley goes to another store, only to see Alexa again. And then again. And again. Haley's emotions get so unraveled that she destroys the fountain in the mall square. So Haley decided to focus more on a song to perform, only to discover the next day that Alexa selected the exact same song. Alexa's also picked every spot in the school to practice in, so Haley begins to work on a dance routine instead. As this is happening, Haley and Jasper agree to meet up outside the school's music room to finish working on the report. Haley overhears Jasper's drum playing, and she admires it when he notices that he's late, and the two wind up bumping into each other as he lost track of time. The two talk as they pass by the gym, only to hear familiar music coming from it. Now, Alexa is using the new song that Haley had selected before. Haley barges in and accuses Alexa of swiping her notebook, which had gone missing earlier. As the two girls argue, their psychokinetic abilities begin to rage out of control. 
Finally, Haley decides to leave. However, while she exits, a stack of nearby lunch trays starts flying off and hits Alexa straight in the face. The other members of the hive snap at Haley. They think she threw the tray. She denies it, and Jasper pulls her out of the gym. Yeah, I'm guessing there's a pretty steadfast layer of deniability concerning Haley and Alexa's psychokinetic powers. You know, kind of like how in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, none of the other students seem to notice all the vampires and demons running around their high school. Jasper tells Haley that he saw everything, and Haley finally confesses her and Alexa's secret. He promises to keep it a secret and to help Haley come up with a new routine. As they head back to the Rayans' home, Jasper also gives Haley the real story behind Angelica and Trini. The two were very close at one point, but then Angelica dumped Trini in an attempt to become popular, not because Trini was jealous. The two begin working on a new routine. Jasper even offers to back Haley up on drums. The problem is, Haley's gone through every song in the top 40, and she can't find any one that works. So, Jasper selects an older song, We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's. The next day at school, Haley approaches Alexa with a peace offering. Her mother gave her a sample of a new celebrity perfume fragrance that has yet to hit the market. The price? The two must get along with each other until the competition. Time passes, and Haley slowly starts reclaiming a sliver of her popularity as she practices her routine with Jasper. Finally, the night of the competition arrives. However, Haley notices that all the other people in the competition keep having some form of accident happening to them. All except, of course, for Alexa. Knowing there's nothing she can really do, Haley reluctantly stakes the stage with Jasper when their turn is up. Haley begins her song when she notices a set of stage lights beginning to loosen. The lights are right above Jasper's head, so Haley uses her psychokinesis to try to hold the lights in place. The lights also shut off, but Trini annoyingly helps out by shining a spotlight on Haley. The rest of the performance goes off without a hitch. Backstage, Haley confronts Alexa over possibly killing Jasper. Alexa points out that she would have only taken out Jasper's drum kit. She's not that cutthroat. It's then that the final results are announced. Haley winds up winning by one point. Haley and Jasper leave to celebrate with their families. When they get a brief moment alone, Haley shows Jasper her locket. The locket contains a picture of two babies. One is Haley. The other, she's not so sure about. It could be her sister. The locket was with Haley in the basket she was found in. It turns out that Haley was adopted. The next day, Haley is welcomed warmly by the rest of the school. She manages to warm signals over with Trini, and Trini points out that she saw things at the competition that Haley promises to discuss at a later point. It's then that the Hive arrives. Alexa announces that she got a job to model for a makeup company, which means she probably will become even more popular than ever. She then tries to put the moves on Jasper, offering to hire him as her personal drummer. But he shoots her down, you know, given that she almost killed him. And as the hive leaves, Haley psychically trips Alexa up and sends her straight into the pile of lunchtime garbage. Maybe popularity isn't truly all it's cracked up to be. And so concludes Queen Bee. How was it? Well... I'll admit, I'm not exactly the intended demographic for this book. Uh, obviously, it's has been more for, say, uh, 10 to 12-year-old girls. But I think it's actually a good book to introduce to a 10 to 12-year-old female audience if you want to get them interested in comics, particularly if they're fans of uh, teen shows like Girl Meets World or Stuck in the Middle or Game Shakers. And, you know, the pacing throughout the story is pretty good. There's not really a lot of uh, plot cold de sacs anywhere or anything like that. Nothing grinds to a halt. The story just kind of moves along. And the artwork is fairly passable. But there is kind of a drawback in that artwork in the fact that it's black and white. Now, look, I have read plenty of really good black and white comic books. I'm not picking on black and white comic books. But in this case, I really do feel this thing needed to be in color. Um, it's sometimes hard to tell characters apart because they're both uh, black-haired girls in black and white. Uh, likewise, like I said, I had to make the note of which one was Haley and which one was Alexa. You know, I can't tell a blonde and a redhead apart. Not to mention Haley's costume for the performance at the, comp the talent competition is supposed to be this 80s-inspired fashion move, and... Well, if you think of the 80s, you think big, bright, neon colors. 
And again, that's kind of hard to translate in black and white. Uh, a lot of the really good black and white comics harness the fact they're in black and white. You don't need to imagine them being in color. And that being said, there's also a pretty big plot hole involving Haley again. Uh, obviously, there are many. They're kind of leaning towards the idea that Haley and Lex are uh, twins separated at birth or something to that effect. But if Haley's adopted, then how did Haley's mother know that the psychokinesis was a genetic trait passed down throughout the family? Now. Granted, these could have been event answered in later editions, but there haven't really been any later editions, so that's just a plot thread left dangling. <sighs> but overall, I can't say this is a horrendously bad book, so I will give Queen Bee a C. And with that, let's see what we'll be doing next time on the Random Trade Review.